Let me ask you. Let me ask you this question because I've seen this, especially uh, during the pandemic. Everybody's become an epidemiologist and an immunologist. Everybody's an expert on this stuff. Now, we, what I've seen a lot on social media is people talking about, well, this model or that model turned out not to be exactly right. So why are we trusting science to do all this stuff? And I and I want to bang my head against the wall when I hear that because in my mind, that's exactly what science is supposed to do. Science is supposed to falsify hypothesis. Science is not physics. Science is not uh, math. Science is not chemistry. Science is a way of thinking. And so the idea behind science, or one of the ideas behind the scientific way of thinking, I think, is to check these biases. But maybe the scientists are deceived about that too, right? I mean, square one is to say, if we want to reason about something, we have to at least entertain two possible theories of the world. Right. So in this context, let's identify two possible theories. One is that these epidemiologists, et cetera, are doing a good job of having reasonable guesses and then updating them in the context of learning more. That's one theory about them and who they are and what they're doing. Another theory about who they are and what they're doing is that they take on the, the image and prestige of science, but they aren't actually doing a good job of science. They are basically parroting whatever somebody wants them to say or whatever elites around them are saying and whatever seems politically you know, in their interest to say. And they are just using the appearance and format and style of scientific reasoning without actually using what you might say is the key process of being careful and honest about the, uh, their, what, you know, deciding if their theories are correct or incorrect and updating them. So those are the two theories on the table, right? Right. And so now when we see them out there, okay, they have a theory and it didn't do so well. The key thing we have to ask is under which theory was that more likely? And that's the Bayesian way to do Bayesian reasoning to try to slightly move in the direction of one or the other. And I got to say that particular data point doesn't really tell you much about either of those directions. Merely the fact that some of their models weren't so good is consistent with both of these stories. So if you want to draw a conclusion about one story or the other, you're going to have to do it on some other evidence than the mere fact that sometimes the models were a bit off. If you say the models have consistently been way off, okay, that's more consistent with the story that they're bullshitting and don't know what they're doing and they're just spitting out you know things that look nice that don't make sense. Yeah. On the other hand, if you say, well, look, a lot of the things they predicted, they got it right. And they were those things were kind of surprising. So I'm impressed. Well, that supports the other theory that says, well, looks like they know some stuff and they're <laughs> telling you some stuff that you can't expect them to get it all right. But I, you know, the key point here is for most people, you're not going to know enough to distinguish between these two theories merely on the basis of that. Sometimes they got some things wrong. I and mean, come on, that's just going to be true no matter what. This is a perfect segue, I think, into talking about something that I, you've been interested in. We were talking about it right before the show. You've been interested in this recently. The difference between expertise, experts, and elites. Talk about, talk about that a little bit, Robin, if you don't mind, because I, I think this is a really fascinating topic. Well, I just like looked up a couple Google pages where I, you know, expert elites, I put on the top, and basically a number of pages conflate them. Most of the times when people make the two concepts, they say they're basically the same. Yeah. They use them interchangeably and they are not interchangeable. So let me give you some of the distinctions where, where the, it makes a difference. So for example, there's a difference between a newspaper reporter and an op-ed or column. Yes. Uh, the reporter is more an, an expert mode, an expert, and the op-ed is more of an elite. Or think about the difference between boards of directors and boards of advisors. <laughs> advisors are the experts. The directors are the elites. Yeah. Or think about on a conference, the difference between a talk and a panel. In the talk, you're in an expert mode and you are speaking as an expert. In the panel, you are supposed to sort of be an elite. You are, um, you know, you're going to open up to questions that you hadn't thought about ahead of time that maybe you haven't done research on. You're still going to opine about them and you're still going to talk about them as if you were an elite. And if you think about like most, e even a Nobel Prize winner, What's the first thing most Nobel Prize winners do? Well, they try to make a bid to be an elite. They've just reached the peak of expertness and they've decided this gives them an entree maybe to become an elite. So they start to write op-eds and they start to express opinions on a wider range of topics yeah. because they think maybe now they can be treated as an elite. Uh, now, in most, most firms, the structure is that 
employees at the bottom are in a sense the experts. They know the most about each part of the job. And the manager at the top is the least expert on any particular job, but they are the elite. They make the key decisions. Now the managers will usually, if you have a decision the company makes and somebody challenges the company about it, the, the manager or their PR person will usually point to the experts and say, hey, I've got all these good employees and I just do what they tell me. Yeah. And so, you, you, but of course the manager really is making decisions, but they'd rather hide behind the expertise of their employees. And even when you think about promotion, usually the story is going to be, well, we're going to take people who are the best at their jobs and promote them because promotion goes by expertise. But of course, we know that in fact, promotion often goes by eliteness. Yeah. And so, and eliteness is more your general, you know, suitability for being a general all around respected person. How good you are at the water, how good you are at the, the water cooler. Well, basically. Right. Yeah. Uh, for example, right. There's a whole bunch of complicated things going into choosing elites, but basically they are two different games played by different rules that overlap. And so one of the more interesting things is elites often try to hide the elite game they play and pretend to be experts or pretend to be something else. Yeah. And, uh, but often, you know, in some sense, the, the Nobel prize winner shows you that in fact, the elite game is the game most people would like to join if they could, <laughs> even Nobel prize winners say too bad. I'm only an expert. Yeah. 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 I'm not an elite because I want to go try to be one of these elites. And, uh, so the, the biggest claim to say is that in society in general, we're following the same pattern. So if you look at like government agencies or newspaper, news media or something, almost all the major institutions in our society present themselves as if they were trying to follow the experts. Yeah. The newspaper reporters just trying to interview the experts, the government agencies trying to hire the experts and do what they decide, right? All these institutions are basically presenting themselves as if if we have elites, it's only that these are people who have or are experts and that's what makes them elite. And they're denying that there's any difference between elites and experts. They're, it's all the same thing you see from the image they present. Yeah. Now, if we realize, no, 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 elites are a different group of people than experts and they are, have a different process and a different game, then we see that in fact, in our world, it's elites who make the key decisions, not experts. Yeah. And I think this was dramatically shown early in the pandemic. This is what really highlighted it for me, made me think about it over the last you know, nine months. Pandemic experts have had their standard story about what to do in a pandemic that goes back decades. And you know, you can look at all their standard writings about you know what to do about travel bans or what to do about masks or what to do about quarantines and all those sorts of things. And they've had their standard story about what to do in a pandemic. And there was no particularly new information that showed up, except as soon as we had a pandemic, all the experts, all the elites in the world suddenly decided that's a subject to talk about. Yeah, yeah. The elites went wild talking to each other about pandemics and the elites decided that they did want masks and they did want quarantines and lockdowns and they did want travel bans. And yeah. so the elites declared that was the better thing and they, the experts caved immediately. Yeah. As soon as the elites declared that that was better, the experts changed their mind about what the expert judgment was. Just like in 1984, of course, I was just reading this section last night where in the middle of a speech, they declare that no longer at war with Eurasia and now at war with East now, Asia. Well, well, yeah, now at war with the other ones, yeah. And the narrative completely. Right. And, and the, and the, right. But the, no, yeah. the speaker didn't even acknowledge that the change had happened mid-sentence. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, similarly in the pandemic, you know, people didn't really acknowledge that suddenly all these pandemic efforts had caved and changed their minds entirely about what to do. Yeah. And this shows that fundamentally, you know, it's also sort of a feature of politics and many other things. When the elites don't care about a topic, the experts rule. Yeah, the experts do their expert things and they decide. But as soon as elites turn their attention to a topic and talk about it and come to some sort of elite consensus, then the elites rule. That's the decision of what happens. So I've been thinking about this, and tell me if this is kind of similar to what you're talking about. I've been thinking about this for a year or so, and here's 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 what it is. So you you hear, for instance, like. LeBron James starts opining on certain political issues and he's told just go dribble the ball or Kim Kardashian is yeah. talking about criminal justice reform or you see you listen to Rush Limbaugh yeah. or whoever you want to talk about on cable news is offering all these opinions about things that they demonstrably know almost nothing about like so in other words why right. why sure. would anybody listen to rush limbaugh about right. that's like any topic at all that he has no but you're asking about. why are there elites at all and so that's why that's yeah that, that's what i'm getting at yeah that's what i'm getting at it seems to me like robin what you're saying is 
we don't really care that much about expertise, or we, at least we don't care as much about expertise as we pretend we do. Right. So what we fundamentally care about is status and affiliation with status. So yeah. humans, like many other animals, have status hierarchy, and we are really eager to be seen as high a status as we can. And so eliteness is about this prestige and status. Yeah. There's a lot of things that go into being considered a prestige, prestigious person, but you know, having elite education or having elite credentials of academic or having a TV show or being, you know, in, in the news a lot, those are all things that add to your eliteness. And so we're lo mostly looking at people's overall status when we judge how high an elite are they. And then what happens is elites talk among each other, they gossip. Yeah. And that gossip forms an opinion that's a strong anchor for everybody else. We want to agree with the elites. We want to follow the elites. And in fact, you know, there's many studies that suggest elite opinion drives most policy in most countries. Yeah, uh, It's not popular opinion that drives policy, it's elite opinion. And it's the opinion that the elites form by talking among themselves that is the thing that, you know, the actual policy follows. So we are each mainly interested in showing that we are a good candidate for elitehood. <laughs> that is, yeah. we should be considered high status. And one way to do that is to agree with the elites and to try to share as many features as we can with them and to try to associate with them. And that's the game that humans have played for a very long time. And we continue to play, but it's a complicated game because not only are we just trying to show that we're smart or pretty or rich or whatever else goes into that, but the elites have all these coalition dynamics among them. So one side of the elites is gonna to try to knock out another side of the elites and make some more room for people like themselves. So that happens politically, for example, where, you know, one, you know, left elites try to knock out and cancel the right elites so that all the elites are left. Or for example, elites who are academics will try to get rid of non-academic elites, yeah. you know, et cetera. But, and so basically there's all these different factions among the elites who are vying for positions, but fundamentally they, they want to disagree somewhat to knock down the other time, but they, if there's any strong consensus among the elites, they want to seem like they're agreeing with that. Yeah. So, and maybe an example in my own personal life would be, you know, I, I, profess to be very interested in logic and reason and science and stuff like that. But maybe part of that is because the people that I want to impress, i.e. the Robin Hansons of the world, the Ben Hunts of the world, the Robert Wrights of the world, they're interested in that too, right? And so I'm basically speaking the same language that my peer group and the people that I want to impress speak. So the, the, the most obvious thing to notice is take any group of experts, I don't know, chemists, when yeah. they get together, they try to switch into elite mode. Yeah. They try to be like they were a panel at a conference. They talk about things way outside their area of expertise. They try to talk about them smartly and, and with the agreement with others, but they're trying to convince the people around them, hey, I'm elite candidate, I'm, I'm elite material here. Yeah. You should think of me not just as a chemist, but as a potential elite. And it's clearly, you know, elites very rarely try to convince you they're good chemists. Yeah. <laughs> so you very rarely, so, so for example, say a reporter makes a book on a subject, I don't know, it might be about COVID or something. Well, if they write this book, they will interview many experts on COVID and then their book will have some expertise on COVID. And then they might give a talk and somebody might ask them questions about COVID. And then in that quick Q and A, they will kind of pretend to be an expert. If they, if the question is a question they know the answer to because they wrote this book, they will be happy to tell that. But they're not that eager to be seen as an expert because, hey, they're the journalists who wrote this book everybody likes. It's much more that the experts are eager to be seen as elites than the elites are eager to be seen as experts. Except yeah. that in some sense, the elites all want to pretend that they're expert enough. Yeah, yeah. Uh, whatever it is. 